So this is the Learn Near um, uh, uh, GitHub organization. If you search here for the word sample, you'll find the samples. If you search here for the word NCD, for the letters NCD, you'll find the four demos from before. Okay. And starter, you'll find the starter kit that I'm about to show you right now. This Rust uh, starter kit is not, is not yet real. It's a placeholder. Okay. But here's for assembly script. This is what we're about to walk through. Uh, and so, uh, so in this starter kit, uh, what we're looking at is a very simple contract. So here, here it is at a very high level. There's a contract with some methods. Not sure how big to make this, right? So there's a contract with some methods and there's a readme here that kind of walks through the design of this contract. So you can see like, this is what the methods look like some important distinctions between view and change methods. A view method is one you just kind of read and a change method is something that's gonna either access the, the execution context, so it needs to be signed, or you're gonna change the state of the blockchain, so it needs to be a signed transaction, right? So that, that's kind of the, from a web developer's perspective, a big difference here is that you're not sending your username and password into the network and then Facebook tells you, yes, you've, you've given me the right data. You're actually signing a transaction local on your computer, public, private key, cryptography. You, you sign a transaction locally with your private key, and then the network receives that signed transaction and verifies that it was your private key that signed it because it knows your public key, and, and there's a way to do that with the public private key magic. So uh, view functions, view methods don't require a signature, right? and I'll show you what that means. So here's just a couple of simple examples of these functions. and uh, this is what they look like in code. So uh, this one, you call it, it basically just logs something. This one, you call it and it returns true. This one, you call it and it returns a string. So this is a contract. This, we're looking at the code of a smart contract right now. Sorry if that wasn't clear. This one checks to see the, the sender, who the sender is. And by the way, context sender, like this is your cryptographically verifiable identity. In Rust, this looks like env uh, signer account uh, ID, and it's a, a method that you call. That's that's in, in Rust, what it looks like in a Rust contract. So instead of the word context, you're using env, which is the standard WASM um, uh, hook into the, the WASM execution environment in Rust. Uh, and then signer account ID is the, the method name. Okay, so that there'll, there'll be differences like that that you'll notice. Um, and then, um, and so here again, uh, we're writing to storage in this case. And now here we're wrapping storage with this abstraction called uh, persistent DQ, which we can command click and see it's basically, uh, you know, this, this wrapper around storage. So we're using the storage API, but we have these, these convenience methods here, like, um, uh, you know, does it contain the index? Uh, you know, aliases for operators like this. So, so that's what that's what these these collections are that I mentioned earlier. So, this is a smart contract. Here's what it looks like, and then what this uh, system, what this this uh, repository has you do, is uh, for Windows users, you might run into some issues with some of these commands. By the way, it has you go in basically and build this and then deploy it using this near dev deploy where you point at the contract. So like, I think this path here, unless you're using a specific kind of terminal on Windows, this path will need to be something like C backslash, you know, my documents, like that kind of stuff on Windows, for example. So just be aware, you might run into some stuff here, but there will be other people that can help you with that in the Discord. If not, I'm happy to spin up a Windows virtual machine and, uh, and, uh, and, and try and replicate your error and help you with it. If you're using a Mac, all this will, or Linux, all this will just work out of the box. And so here's the, the contract init and then a run that goes through and runs these methods. And here, sometimes there's explanations of how these work with some links into the documentation for you. So you can take a look at this repository. So enough talk, let's actually see how this works. So uh, the, the way I've, I've done this, let me just, let me just start here. Uh, and I will um, come here and say clone. So code, I'm going to grab this, git clone. I'm going to grab this starter and this is like the you know starter for for as i'll just call it that it doesn't matter right i mean you can call it whatever you want i, I happen to ha already have the thing there so i'm 
I'm gonna just go into here. Okay, so that's my um, folder. These are the files that I've got. Can everybody see this? Okay, it's big enough, okay. And so now uh, just, you know, yarn, I'm gonna install my dependencies and then yarn test unit. Or if I want to, I could just say yarn run and it'll tell me, yarn will tell me what I can run. And so here test or test unit, if I wanna run that. And you'll see unit tests because it's assembly script. These unit tests are running using aspect. It's an RSpec type library. RSpec uh, syntax, the, the ergonomics of RSpec, basically same syntax. And so you can see it, it all runs. Okay, that, that's fine. And then I can go into scripts and I can go to init if I want to and run that. And so here it'll say, hey, you're missing contract and you're missing owner environment variables, right? And, and that's, that's fine. For the first time I run this, I'm not stressed. I'm gonna export those variables next. And so um, this will run, it's building, you know, this kind of throws an error here because it it's, doesn't have everything it needs. It's gonna redeploy the contract using uh, a near dev deploy, which automatically creates a developer account with a timestamp. This is, you know, some, some timestamp generated thing. And so here I'm gonna export contract equals um, export contract equals this account. And I'll do the same over here, export contract equals this. And what is this window over here? This is actually near account utils, which are um, included. If you go into um, this readme here uh, in the scripts. So maybe I can show you this um, in, uh, in this interface or look a little bit cleaner. This is how you set up your terminal under scripts, you know, Windows A and B. And in terminal A, you're gonna have these things. You're gonna export the contract like this. You're gonna run these commands, right? In terminal B, you're gonna do this same sort of thing. And here's the repository for this account utils that I'm about to run. And here's some, some support for operating systems, okay? So this is the readme inside of the scripts folder. And in fact, every, every one of these folders should have something like a, a readme to kind of guide you in, in what's going on. Whenever there's something going on, you'll, you'll see a readme there, right? So for tests, for example, there's a readme here that shows you what the expected output is. Okay, so hopefully that, that helps you orient yourself. And so back over here, I've just exported this contract. I've just exported this contract. So now I'm gonna run um, this storage in a using a watch command that's gonna repeat. And I'm just watching the contract storage right now. I'm actually, I'm continually hitting the blockchain to see what's the storage of this account whose you know ID I just put in here. And now I'm going to uh, run the contract. So um, yeah, that, that's fine. So I'm calling, show you no, I don't know what, and then I run into this error that says can't sign transactions, no matching key found. So if you get errors like this, can't sign transactions on account, and there's like an extra space in there, it's because, and we can take a look at this, because this is expecting an owner variable to be set to sign this account. I need some valid account on testnet. And so how might you do that? You're going to go to wallet.testnet.near.org. And you can click. That's, that's this. And you can create an account. You're going to make an account. It's going to be something.testnet. And then you're going to get 200 near in the test net. It's not, it's not real money. It's funny money. And so here, export owner, just my, my user account. I'll use, you know, sharif.testnet. And then I'll run the script again. Now, keep your eye on the right-hand side. As we go to write, now it's checking who am I. It knows my name. Now it's going to save my name. You'll see my name appear on the right-hand side. There it is. Last sender was sharif.testnet. And then it writes a message. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look very pretty. Yeah, this, this wrapping's a little bit off, sorry about that. Um, so, 
Okay, so, so you can see I'm the last sender and there's some messages in there that were written and then written out. Let me, let me try running that again. You'll see what that looks like. And so this setup lets you watch the blockchain and watch as you're reading and writing to the contract to see how your state is changing. That's all, right? That's all that's going on here. And so I've just written this message and now I'm gonna read it by popping it out. Okay, and so if we look to see what is this run script doing, it's basically saying, hey, call a view on show you know, call that function, then call this function, then call this function. That's what these first three outputs are. So false, true, hello, and each one of these is logging something, logging something, logging something. You can see the, the log here. I can highlight that for you. There's logs all over this page. Then the next one is calling, say my name. And I need to use a, a change method in this case because I'm accessing the environment. So here under say my name, how do I know that this is Sharif.testnet is the one that's calling because in this contract here under say my name, I have to access the environment. From inside the contract, I have to reach out and grab some piece of information from the environment. And so in that case, you have to use this signed message. It can't just be like an anonymous method. So hopefully we're at a, a little bit over an hour. Hopefully this has been uncomfortably fast. And some of you are thinking, oh, I'm gonna watch the recording. Perfect, that's exactly where you need to be right now. And in the end, what you're gonna do is you're going to look at this list of activities to do on day one. And you're gonna follow these instructions. Core activities, all I showed you was this bonus activity right here. I'll remind you again, if you've been building on Ethereum for a couple of years, about an hour a day is enough. You'll see it immediately, what's going on and what the differences are, no problem. You'll focus most of your attention on like tooling and where's Truffle and things like that. So we, some of this tooling we don't actually have, right? And so it'll be pretty quick actually, you'll, you'll get it. If you're new to blockchain development, brace yourself for two hours a day of serious work, even with several years of web development experience, not sort of fake work. And if you're a web developer with just a year uh, of experience or two years of experience, decide now that you're gonna put four to six hours a day of serious work, the kind of work that's gonna give you a headache. Maybe you're gonna feel a little bit sick when you're done. That, that's how intense this is gonna be. So just to, to kind of get, I don't want anybody to be surprised at the end of the week, okay? This is, it's, it's gonna be intense. And we're here for you. It's literally our job to make sure that you get through this.